All right. So um, this is a really interesting one. There's a, a lot of stuff going on in this particular problem. And so we're going to talk about several things up front and then we'll get into um, how, how we're going to solve this. Okay. So the first thing I want to point out when we do this is what's missing in this particular question. Okay. Which is kind of a blessing. Um, so if you see that keyword smooth, if it says it's a smooth surface or a smooth plane or a smooth wall or a smooth floor, give yourself a little thumbs up because what that means is there's no friction. Okay. Smooth is a code word for no friction. All right. Let's talk about uh, the fact that it's a spring and we're supposed to find the unstretched length of the spring. Okay. So when it comes to the force that is generated by a spring, um, the equation is this right here. So the, whoops. The equation is the force of the spring is equal to something called the spring constant times the amount that the spring has stretched. Okay, now this is a magnitude. Direction with springs can be tricky on occasion. So we're just going to sort of limit ourselves to magnitude. And so K is a physical constant. It has to do with how tight the wire is wrapped, how thick the wire is, um, how long the spring is. All those factors go into the value for K. Um, so if you, you know, if you order a, a, a spring and you need something for a particular design, then you, you look up the spring constant. Okay. I need a copper spring or I need a steel spring or I need whatever. Okay. That's it's somebody has worked out that number already. So we just take it and we're, we're going to use it. Okay. Now then Delta S has to do with the stretch or the change in length of the spring. Okay. So let's suppose my spring is this long. Okay. If I compress it, then I've made a negative length. All right. And so K times my Delta S Delta S is negative um, means I'm going to have a negative, And so it's going to push back. All right. On the other hand, if I stretch my spring this way, then I'm going to have a positive, which is going to bring it in. It's going to want to come in this way. So springs are what we call a restorative force. So you lengthen it, it tries to shorten it. You shorten it, it tries to lengthen it. Okay. Now in our task here, it says, um, determine the unstretched length of the spring. Now the Delta S is actually, it's, we're going to say it's how long it is minus its original length like this. So it could be positive or it could be negative. And my picture is in the way. There it is. Okay, so it could be positive, but it could be, or it could be negative. All right, so let me set these things aside. We are going to come back to those, but we don't need them now, and they're just going to be uh, in the way. Put those guys over there. Okay. Um, but what I want you to see there is if we can get the force of the spring... Since it tells us the spring constant, then we'd figure out the delta S. If we know the delta S, then we can figure out the original length because we know its length right now. How do we know what its length is right now? Well, what we know is we know this whole side right here is 0.5. Okay. So, We've got what the length is L right now. Okay, let's get rid of that. Okay, so another thing we need to talk about is what we call the normal force acting on the block. Okay, so we're going to talk a lot about normal forces in here and in physics. And um, 
I, I don't know if I've covered this in physics yet or not, but just just in case I um, I haven't. But normal here is an old term that has to that means ninety degrees. So if you say, "Oh, it's a normal angle," then that that means it's a ninety degree angle. It doesn't mean oh, like there's some normal angles that are abnormal. You know, they're like, what? no, that's not what it means at all. N normal just means it's 90 degrees. Okay. So the normal force is kind of like every surface is like a trampoline. Okay. So if you set, if you stand on a trampoline, it's going to flex down like this. All right. And then the whole surface is pushing. And the collective effort is such that the force generated is at a 90 degree angle to the surface. So that's what we call our normal. Okay. All righty. Um, and finally, last thing I want to talk about here before we get started, whoa, is um, our weight here. Okay. Now, what it's given us is a mass instead of what we've had before. Like what we had before was it just flat out told us 550 pounds or 700 pounds. Okay. So a lot of times it's going to give us a mass. And so the weight is going to be the mass times G 9.81. Okay. So in this case, we'd have, we'll have to do a little calculation. G is 9.81, it's approximately 10, so the weight is approximately 50, 50 newtons, all right? Okay, now, we're going to use a cool trick on this one, and that is, did you know there's no hard and fast rule that says your XY coordinate system has to be this way? You can tilt that sucker. Okay, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to tilt it. All right, so it will have um, X here and we'll have Y here. Okay, so we've identified all of our forces. Now what we're going to do is we're going to transfer them to our free body diagram. Okay, so I've got Y here and X here. And we're going to have weight on it here. And the normal force is this way. Okay. So my, my X direction is straight up the incline. I think I forgot to say that, but, but I think most of you figured that out. And then my spring force is, it's not exactly opposite of the weight. It's, it's off at a little bit of an angle. So there's F sub S. Just like that, okay? Okay, there we go. All right, what's step three? Components. Okay, we need the components of our forces. And so what's kind of nice about this, if we put a component on here, is that this component side here goes as four-fifths, because we've got a three, four, five triangle, four-fifths Fs, all right? Um, but its component along the y-axis over here is going to be three-fifths Fs, okay? So again, we don't know the angle. We don't know what it is, but we know we need the cosine. We need the sine. The cosine's four-fifths. The sine is three-fifths. So that's how we get it that way, okay? Okay, let's talk about the weight because we're going to do the same thing with the weight. Okay, so I'm going to need a component coming down this way in the X direction, and I'm going to need a component coming down this way in the Y direction, all right? So we're going to need an angle, okay? What do we know? Well, what we know is we know that this angle right here is 45 degrees, okay? Um, but how does that relate to any of the other angles? Well, it relates like this. Let's, let's go ahead and extend this horizontal to here. Now I have a right triangle, 
Okay, and there's my angle theta. Well, this right here is 90 degrees also. And so that means in my corner here, I've got 90 minus theta, which means this angle over here is theta. Okay, so I hope you can follow all that. That angle right there is theta. So it's useful to talk about, instead of calling it the y component, which you can, that's fine. You can call it the y component. I like to think of it as the component of gravity that's perpendicular to the surface. Okay, it's perpendicular to the surface. And the other one here, I like to think of as the component of the weight that's parallel to the surface. So that's W sine theta, okay? Now, I'm not normally real big on having you just memorize equations and relationships. Most of the time, those are gonna come pretty naturally to you because you're gonna use them, you'll use them a bunch and a bunch and a bunch and it'll just naturally, you'll, you'll they'll be stuck. Um, however, I don't want you to have to go through this whole exercise in geometry every single time we've got some kind of a slope because uh, you'll be doing it a lot uh, eventually when we get to that. So I do recommend that you um, memorize this one and this one. Know that the component down a slope is W sine theta. Therefore, the perpendicular component is going to be W cosine theta. Okay, just go ahead, try to burn that into your mind and, and, and it's going to save you some trouble in the long run. Okay. All right. Now, where are we? So we had our diagram. We drew our forces. We, I forgot to, I did draw, forget to draw the force of the spring on here. Okay. Well, anyway, there it is. Okay, we drew our free body diagram. This time we did it crooked. And now we're ready to do, we did our components. So now we're finally ready to do our algebra. If you're having trouble sleeping some night, uh, what I want you to do is I want you to go through this problem, but don't use a tilted coordinate system. Try to work it all out with a regular coordinate system and see, see how much fun that is. It, it's not, it's not fun at all. Okay. But if you tilt the coordinate system, it's a lot easier to deal with. Okay, so some of the x components is zero. And um, so my x components, I got to kind of turn my head just a little bit. So we're going to have minus the weight sine theta plus four-fifths the force of the spring, and that's equal to zero. All right. Then the other way, we're going to have the sum of the y forces is zero. And so there we've got the normal force up, and we've got three-fifths of our spring force up, and then we've got the perpendicular aspect of our weight down. Okay? Just like that. All right. So now before we go any further with any algebra, we need to kind of say what what was our goal? What are we looking for? Okay, we're looking for the unstretched length of the spring. In order to do that, we're going to have to find the change in the length of the spring. In order to do that, we're going to have to find the force of the spring. Oh, right. So we're looking for the force of the spring. Force of the spring gets to, to delta S. Delta S gets us to L naught. Okay? All right. So. Um, wow. Okay, let's see what we got here. If I look at the Y components here, we know this term, we know the perpendicular component of the weight. That's easy. We can calculate that. Everything is known. Uh, don't know this. 
and we don't know that either. Okay. Um, that, that's going to happen a lot of times. The normal force, we're just not going to know what it is. We'll have to determine the normal force using algebraic methods. Okay. So we'll have to, we'll have to solve for n most of the time. Okay, let's check the other side, and I, I know you guys are way ahead of me now. Look at this. Okay, so we know that's mg. The only, only unknown is the force of the spring right there. Okay, let's rock it. So that means that fs is going to be 5 fourths times w sine theta. Okay, now let's go ahead and plug in for mg. Okay, we could have plugged in for that earlier. Sometimes there is an advantage to plugging in mg earlier. Sometimes there's not. It, it doesn't really matter nine times out of ten. Okay. Um, I just decided for simplicity's sake to hold off. So I got five-fourths mg sine theta. Theta is 45 degrees. That's our fs. Okay. So what that does for us then is once we run the numbers on that, we're going to get the force of the spring as 43.35. And don't you dare put any more digits on there. You know who I'm talking to. Okay. Just like that. Okay. So for our spring, the force of the spring is K delta S, which means that our amount that the spring had to stretch was FS over K. And so that's going to be the uh, 4335 divided by 200, right? And when you run that number, what you get is 0 0.2168, 0 0.2168, okay? So now our final step, we know that delta S is its current length minus the stretch, uh, sorry, it's current length minus the original. And um, so that means our original, if we do a little bit of algebra, take that over there, bring that over here, we're gonna have L minus delta S. We've already talked about how its length currently is 0 0.5 minus 2168, and L naught turns out to be 0.28. Three, two, okay. There you go. All right. So lots of juicy stuff in that one, okay? So the first bit of juicy stuff was the code word smooth. Smooth is important. It's an important term, okay? It means no friction. Whew. One less thing to have to worry about, okay? Um, we had to talk about springs and how the, the force from a spring depends on its material properties, which is K. All right, and how much it has been stretched or compressed, delta S. Uh, we talked about normal forces, okay? Normal force is always going to be 90 degrees. That's what normal means to the surface. And uh, by the way, you're going to run into that in uh, Calc 3 as well, if you haven't already. Um, and then the weight and how you can break the weight up into different components. And again, I recommend you sort of train yourself now, um, uh, weight parallel is weight sine theta weight perpendicular is weight cosine theta just stick those in the old noggin and you'll save yourself a lot of time okay there we go